قالوا ربنا امتنا اثنتين واحييتنا اثنتين فاعترفنا بذنوبنا فاعترفنا بذنوبنا فهل الى خروج من سبيل صدق الله العظيم फिर उसी की तरफ लौटाए जाओगे बयान दर्दा साइकिल है रूह का और जो हम समझ सके हैं मुख्तलिफ बुजुर्गों से और तफासी से जो रूह है नबीम की हदीस की रोशनी में वो चार महीने की उम्र में एक फरिश्ता आता है और एम्ब्रियो के अंदर उसको डालता है अब रूह और जान में फर्क है एनी स्पर्म और एनी एग इज अ लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म रू इज वट मेक्स ह्यूम डिफरेंट फ्रॉम ऑल अदर क्रिएचर्स फ्रॉम ऑल अदर एनिमल्स इट कम्स फ्रॉम द हेवंस एंड द बॉडी कम्स फ्रॉम द अर्थ और एक और आयत है जिसमें इसी साइकिल का तस्करा थोड़े से मुख्तलिफ अंदाज में है ये सूरा वाफर की आयत है हमारे परवरदिगार तुमने हमें दो बार मारा और दो बार ही जिंदा किया अब हम अपने गुनाहों को इकरार करते हैं तो क्या आप भी कोई राह निकलने की सबील है तो ये एक मुकालमा है जो पुराने पाप ने नकल किया है जो जहनियों का अपने परवरदिगार के साथ होगा अब इसमें जो गौर करने की बात है कि दो मरतबा मौत दी और दो मरतबा जिंदगी अदा की क्या मतलब हम तो समझते हैं मौत को जिस तरह से वो मफहूम कुरान नहीं लेता कुरान एक्चुअली मौत और हयात को फेजस या कैफियात की तर्ज में बयान फरमाता है कि रूह अल्लाह पाक ने पैदा फरमाई और तमाम और बाप को जमा करके उनसे पूछा अलस्तुब रबी को एम आई नॉट यूर लॉर्ड एंड ऑल ऑफ दम सेट कालू बला नो डाउट यू आर आवर लॉर्ड तो दिस मिसा और On covenant was taken right at the time of creation of our arwa. It is known as the covenant of Allah. So that means the spirits were created. So the definition of death is when spirit is not there in the body, when the spirit and the body are not united. That is death. and when spirit and the body are united that is life to so, ruh jab is kalbut punjabi mein kehte hain isko ruh jab kalbut ke andar hai to this is life aur ruh jab kalbut mein nahi hai to this is death so isliye quran pehle maut ka tazkara karta hai khara ka maut ka wal hayat ali ab ruh ko mai ko maqsan wa amala to we created death and life to judge Whosoever is doing the right deeds, the first death was created. The ruh was here without body, and then Allah made arrangements 
and our mothers gave birth to us and our spirits or roof came to our body that is first life and then the roof will be taken back the body will go to earth and the roof or the spirit will go to heavens that will be second death and then there will be resurrection and again the roof will be combined with the body and that will be eternal Kalilina Fiha Abala Whatever the reward of this first life will be there in the second life that will be eternal So in that eternal life we are saying that Kalu Rabba Anna Amatta Nasna Daini Wa Amjaita Nasna Daini Fata Rafna Vizlu Bina Fahar Laila Fuguji Min Sabeel O Lord you have you made us lifeless twice and gave us life twice and we have confessed, confessed our sins so is there any exit anyway? And they will be told that there is no exit anymore. So Allah may this vital phase of our spirit spiritual cycle and we make our good deeds and we make our Lord happy with us so that in the final and eternal phase of our life we are rewarded by his Blessings. Amen. So because today is our last discussion, so I thought to thank our sponsors more appropriately for online recording and transmission and the replays which were made possible in the shape of webinars. So we are thankful to Optimus Pakistan and thanks are due to them more in, in, in relation to today's lecture as well. That is, we are going to discuss premium IULs and Swiss and Cost VN has launched one of the first EDOF, EDOF lenses with the name of Lucidus. And this is, I am doing research on it and I have keen interest in this interrupter lens because it combines economy with quality. They have combined it off with EDOF, a simple monofocal lens and it comes almost in the price of any spheric lens. And it is a beautiful optics. So we are thankful to them for providing this lens and there will be one of the videos I will present of this music is today as well. Then I wanted to bring to your notice that the replays of all the videos, there are about 11 lectures already here on this website. And there is PowerPoint slides as well for your review. And very soon we will be giving the download option as well. You can view it and if you want to download the PowerPoint presentation, there will be a download button available. The address is iaquity.com slash courses slash course. What you need is, you have to register yourself. There will be a window with the name of that the courses are not available until you log in. And you have to register yourself before logging in. Then all the of the course will be available with replace videos. Then you will have the PowerPoint slides to browse, and there will be PowerPoint outline as well. And we will try to make and present a pre-test and post-test as well. So that is a learning management system which is here at iaqt.com slash courses slash FACO cataract course Taza Tareen share bhi pesh kiya jate hain Nisar karte hain tujh par jo jaan parwane Nisar karte hain tujh pe jo jaan parwane Yeh Nadeem sahab ki nazar hai 
विशाल करते हैं तुझ पे जो जान पर वाली उदार करे कभी तू भी उनको पहचाने न शौक कम हो न शम्मा की आंच हो मधम न शौक कम हो न शम्मा की आंच हो मधम वो पूरे इश्क का अंजाम अब खुदा जाए उर्दू इनकी भी बहुत अच्छी है ऐसे कसरे नफ्सी से काम लेते हैं तो टूडेज डिस्कशन इज विल बी डिस्कसिंग राइट फ्रॉम द बेसिक्स द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ एस्पेरेटी मॉड्यूलेशन ट्रांसफर फंक्शन एंड कंट्रास्ट सेंसिटिविटी दैट्स वेयर द वर्ल्ड प्रीमियम स्टार्टेड विद इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ एस्पेरिक लेंसेस देन विल बी हैविंग अ वेरी इंट्रीगिंग philosophical discussion of neuroadaptation and its relationship to risk adaptions and focality of iwls then we will be seeing by tri multi and progressive focality and edof technology then we will be having a little discussion on premium iwl practice itself innovation and advances in cataract iwl planning and surgery and then combining economy with quality in premium iwl practice in premium iwl practice we will be taking up multifocal iwl and edo of iwls as well as we will be having a little chat on toric iwls so first we are deal with very basic concepts that is quality begin after cataract surgery concept gains and expectations it's one of the discussion which i made when aspheric iq was introduced you, you know the difference between asphericity and spherical lenses see as we always discuss this is a contrast vision comparison you can see there is poor contrast and in this picture there is very good contrast similarly the patient may be able to and we welcome professor imran akram sahab sahab it's a great pleasure and honor for us i received a call from him yesterday that he will be coming to join the session to to honor our session and my heart was full of joy because he is one of the क्या उस्तादुल असादीज टीचर ऑफ टीचर्स सो आई एम लकी टू हैव वर्क विद हिम फॉर अबाउट 3 इयर्स एंड देयर आर मेनी ऑप्टोप्लास्टिक प्रोसीजर्स व्हिच आई परफॉर्म रूटीनली लाइक स्क्विंट टोसिस फेशियल आटा इन्यूक्लिएशंस सिलिकॉन आर आई फिलिंग व्हिच आई इवन नाउ परफॉर्म ऑल दो दैट आई लर्न फ्रॉम प्रोफेसर इमरान अकरम साहब एंड इट इट्स अ ग्रेट ऑनर फॉर अस दैट ही इज हियर to encourage us and to give recognition to this peco cataract so of course and i feel professor nadeem rufees but has also the same feelings so the con- the concept of aesthetic came from spherical abrasions we will see that definition of real acuity this is from adverse physiology spatial limit of real discrimination is known as real acuity and it literally means acuity means sharpness of vision this is a sequence of events that starts from eye capturing the photons emitted by an object and then transform or uh, forming them into action potentials and culminating into real cortex sensation of vision in the occipital cortex contrast sensitivity measures two variables size and contrast while acuity measures only size so that's the difference between contrast sensitivity function and real acuity testing and you can see here snellen's acuity we all know and this is a contrast vision chart we are not only the size of the letters is changing but the contrast of the letters is also changing from top to bottom
Lower order of variants are myopia, hyperopia, and astigmatism. And higher order of variants are like coma and trephile. They are largely dependent on the pupil size and clarity of the media. Lower order of variants are very common and very easy to understand. Higher order of variants are only 10% of the cases. This is a paraaxial ray, which is least deviated by the system. We know the ray closest to the principal axis or least affected by an optical system. And this paraaxial ray comes to unfocus, which is known as paraaxial focus. An off axis ray, which hits the optical system at far periphery, is deviated more refracted more. So it comes to focus nearer to the paraaxial focus. So there are two foci. That's what gave rise to spherical abrasion. You see, they are bisecting the principal axis at different points. Another thing to very clearly you need to understand here is if the off axis ray is focusing in front of the paraaxial focus, it is a positive spherical abrasion. And if the off axis ray is focusing behind the paraaxial focus, it is a negative spherical abrasion. And I, I have picked these slides from right from 10 years old presentation because this is what Edof is. If you remember these slides, it will be easy to understand the concept of extended depth of focus in later in the presentation. So spherical abrasions occur when rays away from the paraaxial region don't intersect the paraaxial focus. So this was a concern. So that's why the curve of the lenses was modified in a manner so that the lens was less curved in the periphery to bring all those rays into a point focus and that's what conoid of sturm is there is a circle of disc confusion and then there are positive and negative spherical abrasions given to a range of foci and if you diffuse all those or you bring the focus back to a point focus. The circle of least confusion is finished. And that is the concept of asphericity. And we know that the cornea has a spherical abrasion of 0.27 microns. And 90% of the population has positive spherical abrasion. About 10% of the normal population has negative corneal spherical abrasion. So there is a difference between young and aging eye as well. In a youthful eye, cornea is here with positive spherical abrasion, whereas the crystalline lens has a negative spherical abrasion of 0.18. So that spherical abrasion in a young eye is 0.10. So they cancel the positive and negative spherical abrasions of each other and the quality of the image is better in a youthful young eye. Whereas in old eye, the spherical abrasion of the cornea remains unchanged whereas the crystalline lens loses its negative spherical abrasion. So the net result is more positive spherical abrasions in old age. So that was the concept which Elcon grabbed and used to manufacture a piece of IQ lens that they tried to bring the net effect of intraocular lens close to the natural youthful lens. So this is a verse from Samuel Taylor Coleridge, not get this party for wind and weather when youth and I 
लिव इन इट टूगेदर बसारत पे समाज पे चेहरे पे बदन पे माओ साल जो बीते निशान छोड़ गए तो कृष्णा लेंथ पे भी कॉर्नियो पे भी हर जगह एज अपने निशान छोड़ जाती है सो वो ये थिंकिंग बियॉन्ड रियल एक्टिविटी नाउ and there are many optical gimmicks we not only we are trying to remove the cataract but we are trying to correct all the inherent errors of the optical system of the eye like lower order spherical abrasions higher order spherical abrasions how do we correct lower order spherical abrasions by accurate biometry myopia hyperopia and astigmatism so astigmatism was is relatively new to be corrected with the help of toric lenses and intelligent placement of incisions and how do we correct the higher order spherical abrasions by introduction of aspheric lenses by considering the corneal wavefront analysis topographic analysis and incorporating those corneal surface analysis into our biometric calculations and that's where the concept of effective lens position came into picture that is the expected position of the intraocular lens after placement into the bag after cataract iol surgery so the formulas which take into account the effective lens position are fourth generation formulas and now the fifth generation is also there which takes into account the artificial intelligence the ai based formulas are there now to calculate the biometry which take into account like oct like perimetry analysis the age band normals are already there to compare for the software and it the software tells you whether your calculation matches is in the normal domain of the formula or it is outbound or an inbound error point spread function the point spread function describes the response of an emitting system to a point source or a point focus this is one basic test which we use in vivo analysis of intraocular lenses you will see in the later slides modulation transfer function and contrast sensitivity function are the other terminologies used the mtf indicates the ability of an optical system to reproduce various level of detail spatial frequencies from the object to the image the ability to detect objects of different size at low contrast is expressed as csf contrast sensitivity function this is how we measure the modulation transfer function we offer the different replaced differently sized and different intervals of gratings to the system and then the image after passing to the optical system is captured by ccd cameras and then analyzed with the software mtf is equal to modulation transfer function of the image divided by modulation transfer function of the object you can go in detail if you like in the slide review later on these are various devices which are used a port light source is turned on monochromatic light is passed through the iol to be tested a ccd camera is used to capture the image and i'll show you the uh, a video of apple's original analysis of multifocal iols and edo of iols this is the grading which is presented to the optical system and these are the possible results which are captured by the ccd camera to analyze the good is that it is just comparable to the object the fair is it is dull but still you can make out as you are comparing the resultant image on the ccd camera with the object gratings and poor is poor as you can see very well kab mar hua ruksat kab maine shafa payi sunte hain mila tujhko ejaz e masihai 
لازم ہے بسا دیش مسیحا سے دعا لینا فقط دعاؤں میں شفا ہے نا مسیحائی یہ میں نے واٹرا کے مریضوں کے لیے لکھا تھا وہ ڈپارٹمنٹ ہاسپٹل ہے تو ایکسپیکٹیشن بڑی ہائی ہوتی ہیں تو سمرائز دا کوالٹی آف وی این کانسیپٹ اسٹارٹڈ فرام یہ انٹروڈکشن آف اسفیرک آئی او ایلز اینڈ کنٹراسٹ سینسٹیوٹی واز آلسو تھاٹ ٹو بی امپورٹنٹ ان دا ڈسکشن اینڈ دا کمپنی اسٹارٹڈ ٹو فائنڈ آؤٹ اے لینتھ وچ میچز دا یوتھ فل لائف and our, with this we move on to our set part set 2 that is neuroadaptation and its role with the dysprotopsias so neuroadaptation the pehli neuroadaptation after what is called right after birth the first episode of neuroadaptation occurs right after birth the child is seeing her mother's or his mother's image upside down and the first time The image is upside down, that's why the child is crying. And very soon, the occipital cortex cracks it. And the world becomes... How the child knows that this image is upside down? <laughs> Because the amount is not coming. That's why the child is coming. The child is coming. The child is coming. The child is coming. This is what the philosophy is. If we start discussing now, the whole of the rest of the discussion will go in this question. آنکھ سے ایک روز بے حد ناز سے بولا دماغ دس از اے ڈائلاگ بٹوین برین اینڈ دا آئیز عقل کی اندھی ہے تو الٹا نظر آئے تجھے دا برین از کمپلیننگ دیٹ یو سی دا امیج اپ سائڈ ڈاؤن از سیم ٹو دا آئی دا آئی از ویری اسمارٹ یو نو آنکھ بولی میں نہیں تو الٹا سیدھا کچھ نہیں میں ہوں دریچہ نور کا کون سمجھائے تجھے دا آئی سیز آئی ایم ونڈو ٹو دا Images. I am window to the light. If I am not there, there is no electron upside down image. So this is an important surprise. Neuroadaptation is a sensory adaptation is a gradual decrease over time in responsiveness of a sensory system to a constant stimulus. And this neuroadaptation keeps on occurring in our daily life without knowing on subconscious level. You, you put your hand on a hot surface, you will feel it initially it is very hot, but very soon the sensory system will adapt to it and it will not be, you will not be feeling it that hot. Though the temperature of the solid surface has not decreased, that is one kind of adaptation. And some, you, you put your hand on a solid surface, on this corner of the dice, I, I feel a little pain. But if the hand remains here for a certain while, the sensation of pain will become dull. That is also neuroadaptation. So there was a very interesting experiment of eyes and brain. That uh, the dialogue of eye and brain I have not written purposeless. This is a scientist with the name of George M. Stretton who conducted an experiment in 1890s. What he did was He wore the reversing glasses and for about initial 48 or 24 hours he was seeing upside down image but as he continuously wore the glasses the brain was able to correct it. Later on the prism glasses which inverted the image after about 48 hours or 3 days the image was again upright without removing the glasses. So he showed that this correction of the image can occur in even in adult age as well. So that is what the flexibility of brain has. Light and dark adaptation is also one example of quick neuroadaptation which we experience daily. And there is a spouse adaptation as well. <laughs> Professor Ashfaq Manoom used to say it is for the youngsters, the upcoming fellows who are recently married or going to be married. You know the success of married life is not the word love, is the word compromise. You have to give way to each other's desires and wishes and routines. Only then you can enjoy a successful married life. 
सो दिस इज अ वर्ड कॉम्प्रोमाइज व्हिच वाज यूज्ड बाय प्रोफेसर इशफाक नहीं तो वो रास्ता भी केड़ा है रसूल को वो राह है वो राह भी है खुद ही तो कहते थे मुझे खुद को बदल लो खुद ही तो कहते थे मुझे खुद को बदल लो बदला हूं तो कहते हो कि अब वो ना रहा मैं बदली हूं तो कहते हो कि अब वो ना रही मैं सो दिस इज अ स्पाउस इज नॉट फ्रॉम द हस्बैंड और वाइफ द वर्ड फॉर द स्पाउस इज जौज इन अरेबिक सो देयर इज द वेरो एडेप्टेशन हैज बीन स्टडीड बाय डिफरेंट टीन ऑब्जर्वर्स एंड फिलोसोफर्स देयर वाज अ फेमस French painter or an artist with the name of Monet. These are the pictures. This is <coughs> this is a picture he painted with cataract. You see the dullness and loss of contrast. And this is a picture which he painted after correction, after removal of the cataractous lens. so there are many such things which are available in the history which shows the importance of contrast sensitivity and clarity of the media at the same very aankhon ke jab se hum badle har paas mein aa lagta hai har dal nahi si khail hai nigahon mein ishqal nahi si umre rawane hai chali chal nahi si i am seeing the new shapes in my weird feel the passing age has done a new trick to my eyes that is floaters so why the adaptation differs from for different iuls because the retina plays eyes window to the brain and the retina is the first structure which comes to interact with the image in the shape of light photons so the better <coughs> kind of stimulation the retina is getting the better processing will occur the better image will be sent to the occipital cortex and the occipital cortex and the higher centers will have to do less work if they receive a good sharp image so that's the importance of an intraocular lens and clear crisp media if we give a better quality image to the retina the brain needs to do less work less adaptation that's why it varies for different iuls and that's one reason that the refractive iuls were rejected after evaluation because our neuro adapting system adaptation system was not able to co op with the disturbance refractive lenses were producing with the quality of the image so the success of multifocal iuls depends on the design the material and the concept of getting rid of abrasions the manufacturers have used in those lenses so optics of the iul is very crucial the problems are problems with intermediate vision reduced contrast sensitivity you know this is a common problem with human beings you grab one thing you lose other thing we introduce multifocality but we lost contrast sensitivity and we had to co op with the this photopsial now the topic of current research is to enjoy multifocality but at the same time with no dysphotopsia and no loss of contrast sensitivity that's the kind of ideal multifocal iul which the industry is yet in search of what is dysphotopsia means i am a unwanted image that the patient see after cataract surgery we have discussed already the positive dysphotopsia and negative dysphotopsia this term originates from positive spherical abrasions and negative spherical abrasions and positive dysphotopsia is unwanted new image positive means an additional unwanted image like a streak starburst flicker fog or haze whereas negative dysphotopsia is a black line or crescent shaped deficiency or loss of vision in the far periphery of the viewer field or image so negative is a blackness anywhere in the image 
whereas the positive dystopia is an additional unwanted image. So these are the different kinds of dystopia: glare, halos, flare, starburst, flash, and streaks. So optimizing the light scattering energy, this is what the IOL optics do. You see, we discussed the spherical aberration and the aspherosity. What we did was with the introduction of aspheric lenses that we brought the point spread function, or we <coughs> collapsed the circle of least confusion into a point focus. That is what the aspheric lens is. But what we did with multifocal IOL was with introduction of rings or gradings or steps, we created interference fringes, positive and negative interference of light. That is wavefront analysis, which we studied in our physics basic knowledge. With interference, we created multiple foci. So, if multiple foci are there at the same time, so that's what we got rid of with aspheric lenses. Multiple foci were abolished with introduction of aspheric lenses, and with multifocality, with far near and intermediate foci created by interference fringes, we reintroduced multiple focus to the patient. The same problem of spherical abrasion is there because at any given time. Having a multifocal IOL inside the patient's eye, the brain has to choose one image and ignore or cancel other images. So that was the kind of cycle which repeated with introduction of multifocal IOLs. We reintroduced the abrasions which we had corrected with aspheric IOL because we have created multi optics in the optics of the lens. So that there are a far focus and a near focus on the lens, or there is range of vision. So this was the main reason that it led to loss of contrast sensitivity and creation of dysphotopsias. Then there are bifocal IULs, trifocal IULs, panfocal IULs, EDOF, EDOF, and there is variable focus. Refractive lenses, I have told you, they have been given up because they led to a lot of dysphotopsia. Then these diffractive interference optics came into picture, and they have survived the test of time. But you can see in the lower di diagram that continuously there is one far and one near focus, and the patient has to cancel one and pick up one. The different IULs were monitored. Restore was there, symphony was there, then there are hydrophobic like fine VN, ATLISA, ray one trifocal. The technology may differ from one to other, but all of these lenses have their plus and minus points. Quadrifocal is a technology introduced by pan optics, and somehow they are able to cancel one focus and get the three foci. Then there is a concept of E dot that is extended depth of focus, which gives you range of VN instead of a single focus. And recently, Medic and Tour has introduced elevated phase shift technology, in which they have intelligently modified the distance between. You see, fine VN by phase I U L. This is eighty laser by Zeiss, Alcon pan optics. These fine VN and Zeiss have gradings or rings in whole of the optic, whereas Elcon has a peripheral part of the lens dedicated to far VN only. And similarly, the Rainer has gradings in the center, and then there is a dedicated optic for monofocality as well. What this Liberty Medical Tour has done that. They have not only varied the height of the step, but the distance between the steps has also been varied 
and by intelligent creation of the intelligent fringes they are able to manage the number of frames they have reduced the number of frames from 14 to 6 i think or 7 so they have to dedicate less area to the optic so what is it of that you modify the wave front by introduction of a central spherical button which gives rise to intelligent introduction of spherical abrasion in the center the peripheral part of the lens is dedicated to fovean and in the center the spherical abrasion is re reintroduced and thus the range of focus is attained with the intelligent reintroduction of spherical abrasion into the lens that gives rise to extended depth of focus so sometimes the technology moves in cycles this is a concept concept of continuum of foci that is introduced by cp with the name of mini well the italians are also great thinkers they have blended different zones without any steps that's why they have given the name progressive multifocal iol because there is there are blended zones without any steps and the two central zones are there in which again spherical abrasion is used to create range of intermediate and near vn and then in far periphery there is third aspheric zone which is dedicated for this for vn so this concept is there with minimal dysphotopsia and minimal loss of contrast sensitivity to our experience that is cp mini well and the beauty with lucy this adof is that it is a simple bifocal lens which gives about 90% spectacle independence and it combines economy with quality and the lucidis also has a trifocal adof as well like cp so combining economy with quality was my one of the things to be touched today that is the first word premium we started using with aspheric lenses so the most economical aspheric iul which is as good as rainer aspheric and as good as actis of iq to our experience we have not evaluated it with the modulation transfer function or other things only patient experience that is iriflex which is being manufactured by the same person who is importer of the rainer so i have found that lens in behavior wise as good as rainer aspheric itself so your patient can benefit with quality of aspheric lens with economy with the iris flex then astigmatism management at top level there are alcom toric lenses zeiss has got cp is there but a beauty with the cp mini well toric ready lens is that it is again economical you can almost get it in the price of an aspheric lens it is a four haptic design and four haptic design gives you about 1 degree 120 degrees of contact and more stability inside the capsular bag as compared to Alcon's Stabi Force IOL haptic design that is two point fixation rather. So this four point fixation gives you another good point, a good edge over the routine lens because you can rotate it both ways because of the four four ear or four ears you can say or four haptics. CP mini well I have about 6 months six months. There is absolutely no rotation But in Alcom case Our follow up is more And I had to readjust about 2 out of 10 lenses That may be the learning curve as well But in my own practice I implant toric lenses less 
as compared to multifocal lenses. Maybe you just say, "Kate, eight sides is enough." No. Okay, for every ten multifocal, maybe only one toric. Because my tendency is to manage toric, uh, the toricity or the astigmatism with placement of and variation of in C and location, as well as up to one point five diopter of astigmatism can be managed by dual pass of the keratome blade. You can use three point two millimeter knife. Mark the axis as you mark. In case of toric IUL, we will see in later in the slides. And place your two cuts. You can manage about 1.5 diopter of astigmatism. And this is the concept of depth of focus introduced by Lucidus intraocular lens. They have a central spherical abrasion button, and the periphery is dedicated to fog vision, and thus. A range of rear vision is important to the patient. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today I am going to discuss FACO with Lucidus intraocular lens implantation using Contamac Argo Touch injector. It is a relatively soft cataract and we proceed with frequency and at 12 o'clock position because this is a steeper meridian in this case and the patient carries about one diopter of astigmatism steeper axis being 90 degrees the anterior chamber is filled with viscoelastic material and at least a little viscoelastic is spread over the corneal surface. Then the two side port in CNs are fashioned on both sides of the FACO and CN. Because my preference is bimanual irrigation aspiration, that's why I prefer two in CNs. The 27 gauge cystitome needle enters from the side port in CN. The capsulotomy is being completed. Tongue of the capsule is inverted, and then all the rest of the pull push force is applied on inverted anterior capsule. A very beautiful round rexis is completed hydro dissection comes into the picture which is performed in incremental multi-quadrantic fashion little by little in each quadrant which is followed by hydro delineation and there is yellow ring sign Generally, I prefer the temporal approach for both eyes, but in this case, I placed my incision at 12 o'clock position. The FACO handpiece comes into the picture. Little groove is prepared in the center tunnel, and then I try to crack the nucleus and realize that it is probably being soft to cataract, not possible. So I modify the technique and keep on creating a central crater till the nucleus becomes disengaged and inverted at one end and easily emulsified. After emulsification of the nucleus, perinucleus is being taken care of. And once this perinucleus is softly emulsified i replace the chopper with a fine polished spatula and complete the faco emulsification and then by manual irrigation aspiration and polishing of the capsule is performed the interior chamber is filled with with viscoelastic material and here comes the ilof IUL with extended depth of focus. 
a beautiful land in our experience which combines the quality with the economy and gives quite good spectacle independence to most of the patients with its extended depth of focus feature the lens is supplied in blister pack recently along with contamac ergo touch injector presently being in era of preloaded iuls this appears to be a little cumbersome to me the assistant has handed over the cartridge and now the blister pack is open and the lens is being handed over to me with the help of macpherson forceps i place the lens inside the cartridge under microscope and pressing it into the cartridge tunnel with macpherson forceps we gently close the cartridge so that there is no haptic or optic catch then the cartridge is parked in the plunger and interestingly this beautifully designed injector lacks one interesting feature that is locking of the cartridge <clears throat> once the assembly is com complete the plunger is moved in forward direction so that the lens is placed in the pre delivery position now it's ready i have used 3.2 mm in cn here it just snugly goes into the eye and a very slow injection process is my priority and i keep on watching the delivery of the lens till the last minute as the haptic is opening up i am very slow in the process because this lens beautifully centers because of its atypical wider haptic design but you need to be careful while injecting it so that you don't entangle the margin of the anterior capsule into the leading haptic and my priority generally is to implant the trailing haptic into the bag with the help of injector by dipping it step but in this case it was delivered anterior to the capsule thus i used sinski hook to position the lens in 3 and 9 o'clock positions and again by manual irrigation aspiration comes into the picture for fine polishing and removal of the viscoelastic material from anterior chamber as well as it goes behind the lens to clear the viscoelastic from its posterior surface and finally as in all the cases little hydro infusion of the corneal stroma to close the self sealing in cns the chamber is deepened and my tendency is to leave the i tens at the end of the procedure it's beautifully centered iul so this was lucidus intraocular lens implantation with contamac ergo touch injector thank you very much for your attention so this was the uh, lucidus intraocular lens implantation then the creation of the perfect multifocal iul is yet a dream we have to the industry is in search of it the ideal intraocular lens is yet not there but with the introduction of adoptive technology and many of the problems of dysphotopsia and contrast sensitivity have been solved switzerland 
स्विस उसका नाम है स्विस एडवांस वीएन एस ए वी What kind of multifocal lens technology is available today? In this study, we looked at three different trifocal lenses, the Fine Vision MicroF, the Artelisa Tree, the Acrisoft IQ Panoptix, and four EDOF lenses, the Miniwell, the Lara, the Comfort Lens from Oculantis, and the Symphony from J&J &J Vision. How can we visualize the optical pathways of all these lenses? For the experimental setup for the study, we used a green laser source, as you can see here, and we stained with fluorescent a water bath in order to visualize the optical pathway through the lenses with this green laser. The lenses were put in a specific holder and were always kept in the wet state. The images were captured with a digital camera setup. Video films as well as still pictures were assessed. Looking at the analysis, we used specific software for analyzing the light distribution to define the peaks of the near, intermediate and distance or the EDOF range of vision area. Here we see the Artelisa tree trifocal intraocular lens. The analysis showed two distinct foci for near and distance and the intermediate area where we can see a slight plateau but still a distinct intermediate focus. Here we see the analysis of the Acrisoft IQ panoptics. We can see here a predominant for the distance focus, a smaller focus for the near and very close intermediate focus. The fine vision shows a similar image like the panoptics. In the minivel ready we can see a good focus for the distance and a small plateau which we call the EDUF area. The Artillara, you can clearly see a similarity to the trifocal lens. However, you can see a distance and near focus and a plateau area, which we will also describe at the EDOF range. The Lentis Comfort with 1.5 diopter near edition is a bifocal lens, which can clearly be seen with two foci pretty close together. With the Symphony, we can clearly see the EDUF plateau type of range of vision that again we call an EDOF range. How can we translate what we have seen on the optical bench to the real world? Numerous clinical studies have shown the excellent visual outcome of all these lenses. But what about dysphotopsias and side effects? We've tested that with a dedicated software, a simulator for glare, halo and other dysphotopsias. The patient can on the screen show what he perceives at night when he is in a typical situation driving a car. We compared the data from 60 patients with what we've seen in our experimental setup here. Here you see the Artelisa image and the according image in the simulator. Is a classical halo type. With the tripod F or the fine vision lens, you have a similar image. The panoptics showed a higher amount of starburst in the appearance of the halos. The Attilara as an EDOF lens showed similar performance like 
the Atelisa, but smaller intensity. Symphony lens, we could see more a starburst type appearance. The Minivel showed lower intensity, but small amounts of halos, similar to the MF15, the Comfort bifocal lens. What can we learn from this experimental study? The visualization of the optical pathways could show us the differences among the trifocal intraocular lenses, especially in terms of the position of the intermediate focus. We could see the plateau phase representing a kind of EDOF, an extended range or elongated range of focus in the EDOF lenses. The translation into daily dysphotopsias could also be visualized with a halo and glare simulator showing more classical halo type for the Atelisa and the fine vision lens, but more starburst-like dysphotopsias with the panoptics and the symphony lens. In general, the EDOF lens showed lower intensity of dysphotopsias. There are more things that we need to explore for the performance of modern trifocal and EDOF lens technology. Yeah in vivo and in vitro analysis of EDOF and trifocal IOLs. And you have noticed that the EDOF gives a range of VN and this mini well especially gives rise to less dysphotopsia and less starburst phenomena. And the starburst phenomena was very significant and marked in case of panoptics IOL because there are rings and steps in that which this EDOF technology has minimized or abolished. So success of multifocal IUL is right patient selection, good explanation, and then attention to the details. That is A's and K's, knowing the steeper meridian, knowing your surgically induced astigmatism, intelligent, intelligent placement of incidence, and choosing the right lens for the right patient. There was one of the professors of surgery who approached me for a multifocal IUL. And uh, we spent about two months with each other to choose the lens. Different options he was studying, I was explaining every time he used to come to me. And ultimately, we settled with Miniwell, that is Italian progressive lens. And uh, he is happy because there is no starburst, no dysphotopsia. He can drive happily at night. because it is you no know, inside the eye and we have a residual astigmatism of about my 0.75 diopters and because we had we spent a lot of time together in discussion so he has accepted to use glasses for that for fine vision so that's what it is important it is not contraindicated or a problem if we are able to discuss and uh, combine the our discussions and reach to a the second thing which I have seen in premium IUL practice is that I should not show it and in my heart I don't have any desire to paste a certain technology on the patient because if he is even a private patient if he goes the best monofocal IUL I'm still going to earn so I just put the ball in patient's court that this is what the technology is, these are the compromises, and I am explaining to you because it is my duty to explain the available technologies and the resources to you, and most of the times, the decision is arising from the pocket. And the second thing, if somebody is habitually or by professionally bound to drive at night, the real advice is not to implant these rings, trifocal lenses. The only option in today's technology for those patients is EDOF lenses because they give rise to less dysphotopsia at night. So we have to rule out dry eyes and other associated problems which we have already discussed in our 14 of our previous discussions. So we are going to quickly go, go through it. We have to minimize surgeon-induced errors. 
at least if we are not able to correct all the patient's errors we should not induce the new problems in patient side that's why it is important to really calculate and know through online calculators the surgeon induced astigmatism and you need to feed that reading into the calculation of toric iuls we have to change the mindset of the cataract surgeon into a refractive surgeon now because he has not only to take get rid of cataract and implant a new high technology iul but he has to really correct the inherent errors of the eye as well and there are many online calculators available this is one a barometry which can be used interoperatively this is dr Re so we are going to skip it you can see it later on the toric iuls are there in which the biometry is very important and you can put those readings the to the manufacturer's website there are many toric calculators now cv has got its own elcon has got its own and there is ac ascrs calculator as well we we can put those readings there and calculate the effective lens position and for toric iuls the difference the two steps which are added one is the calculation through a toric calculator the second is that we have to preoperatively mark the reference mark that is known as reference mark and the reference marker may be used for this purpose however we have seen that a simple marker patient sitting in line with a horizontal line drawn on the wall or any horizontal edge which is available at the level of lateral canthi of the patient if we take this line as a reference and just mark it getting our marker parallel to that line visually or we can use the slit beam turning it in a horizontal fashion and then mark the 0 and 180 degree position so that is one pre op step added and then intraoperatively we have the other marker available which will mark the axis of the intraocular lens as you can see this is the reference marker and the second one is the toric marker and all these parameters have been calculated through the online calculator the reference marker is being used to mark 90 0 and 180 degree meridians and the, then the final marker is being used to mark the position where the lens is to be implanted Th this is the final positioning of the lens markers and these are the reference marks the routine FACO is performed the lens is injected and uh, because it is a alcon toric lens so it can be rotated only in one direction so generally we place the lens short of the final objective of our markers so that after clearing the viscoelastic and getting the chamber deep we are able to rotate the two markings on the lens you see these dots are there here and here we have to align those dots with our markers which we have already placed for the final placement of the toric lens axis the ideal toric patient is aged between 30 to 70 and the astigmatism between 1 to 4 but for my own practice i use toric lenses only in cases where the astigmatism is more than 1.5 diopters and I have used two, two toric lenses in my practice. One is the Alcon, and the se second one is CF Minival ready, ready. And I have found the CF Minival Ready to be more surgeon friendly and easy to tackle interoperatively. And it is relatively economical as well. So the other premium thing is the introduction of preloaded IULs see the Rainer and the Hoya and many other companies recently I have used MBI as well 
the beautiful preloaded designs are there for hydrophobic and hydrophilic lenses and it really is a very positive addition to your intraocular lens phaco cataract surgery because it abolishes the steps of handling the intraocular lens a device which is going to stay in the eye of the patient forever if it can go untouched into the eye that's ideal hoya is one hydrophobic design then the rainer has got hydrophobic intraocular lens and uh, it is also very good but they it is relatively different and a little more demanding as compared to rainer's hydrophilic design you have to be more watchful and a little bit more patient while injecting a hydrophobic lens inside the bag because it has a, a specially introduced stability ears along with haptics in case of hydrophobic iols by rainer the future you can configure your lens that is the harmony lens again by swiss advanced vn they have got an online simulator where the patient and doctors can sit the patient fills a performer the doctor fills a performer then the simulator gives practical demonstration of the post operative problems and gains to the patient and the doctor and the patient both can opt for the desired power of the near addition intermediate addition and the for correction and then the lens is ordered and is supplied that is custom made intraocular lens is supplied within 15 days to the concerned surgeon two lenses are actually sent and uh, there is another concept which is being worked again by swiss advanced vn as well as uh, american companies are also working it there is an autofocus sensor here which senses the desire of the patient whether the patient wants to focus for far intermediate or near and then there is a mini motor in the lens which is a kind of solar motor and it is charged and they say that it has a got very long life this motor pumps fluid from these pockets into the optic the curve of the optic is changed to focus for near and once the patient wants to see again on a far object like an autofocus camera this sensor gives a message to the motor and mo motor ejects the fluid from the central optics to the to the side pockets so this is configure your lens and lens with variable focus there are about two three companies working on this concept as well and it has been found to be successful in big size but no human experiment yet so in premium eye practice under promise over achieve and celebrate your success so we are again thankful to optimus pharma for sponsoring this online hosting and transmission of these 15 co lectures of phaco cataract course basics and advanced ax ad se aine vaaste aur roshni the images the lenses the mirrors and the media and the light the do basar kaun va zere nazar raha the topic of vn and seeing was always my consideration or under my focus so thank you for your attention and again the reminder that all these 15 lectures out of which 12 were already there with powerpoint slides and video replays of our talks on iacuity.com slash courses slash faco dash cataract dash course you can view the lectures there nisar karte hain tujh pe jo jaan parwane khuda kare kabhi tu bhi unko pehchane to is martaba sirf pehla sher nadeem sahab ki nazar hai jo dusre ko unhone on karne se inkar kar diya tha nisar karte hain tujh pe jo jaan parwane khuda kare kabhi tu bhi unko pehchane na shauk kam ho na shamma ki aanch ho madam वो पूरे इश्क का अंजाम अब खुद आ जाने थैंक यू सर बसारत पे समाज पे चेहरे पे बदन पे माह साल जो बीते निशान छोड़ गए एंड वी हैड अ डिस्कशन ऑन एजिंग आई एंड अ यंग आई एज वेल थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड वी एंजॉयड योर कंपनी
and our online audience thank you for participating and making this course a success and inshallah it will be a landmark and we hope that we will be coming up such discussions webinars in courses more and more in future as well this is our landmark course and alhamdulillah allah has blessed us with this honor that first time in pakistan we are able to record and play these webinars for the benefit of our juniors and colleagues thank you very much unul bucha ji ke my question for honorable dr nazri what is positive and negative this this for see how to tackle persistent hello after iron implantation uh, there is a question from one of our international audience Ashim from Pacha. qatar and he is our old friend and colleague that is uh, dr hashim paracha so the question is what is positive and negative dysphotopsia as we discussed during our discussion positive dysphotopsia is perception of an additional distortion a line or image in the visual field of the patient and negative dysphotopsia is perception of a dark crescent or spot or circle in the visual field of the patient the second part of the question is how to get rid of halos how can we get rid of halos the neuro adaptation will get rid of halos hopefully the second thing is that i discussed during our one of our lectures that our tendency as with the premium eye oil practice has made this transition for us that we are performing gap capsulotomy earlier than we used to do with monofocal eye wells the reason is we want to get rid of every possible removable error inside the eye which can distort the image and posterior capsule which is a little opaque and dotted should be removed and then hope for the best for the neuro adaptation to come into play positively in your favor and the patient who fails to neuro adapt he is a horrible patient and he is going to make his and your life difficult well done sir thank, thank you sir acha ji kidhar nahi hai theek madam ke beech mein ek to ye ke i don't have words 